The California crash has already started. You just don't know it yet. That's right, everyone. Early warning signs are flashing red and are saying that California's economy and its housing market are on the doorstep of what's going to be a colossal crash in 2022. How do I know this? Well, there's three data points that I'm gonna to reveal to you in this video that are each sounding the alarm for a massive recession and housing crash in California, particularly for certain cities that are most exposed. And the first one of these indicators is how expensive California has gotten. The typical value of a home in California is now over $750,000, which is more than two times the US average and more than 20% more than the second most expensive state, which is Washington. These sky high home prices, which are worst in the Bay Area, particularly in San Francisco, San Jose and Santa Cruz, as well as down in Southern California in Los Angeles and San Diego is where we see the highest prices. These sky high home prices historically are a sign that California's economy and housing market is in a bubble and that a crash will be occurring very, very soon. Don't believe me? Well, check this graph out. Every single time over the last 40 years that home prices in California have spiked to near 20% growth in a year, there's been a crash shortly thereafter. It happened in the late 80s when home prices spiked and then we had a seven year economic and housing crash in the mid to late 90s in California. Then we had another spike in home prices in the mid 2000s thousands followed by a devastating six-year housing and economic crash in California through 2012. Now, once again, year-over-year -year home price growth is approaching 20%, and that means watch out. Now, this crash is going to hit certain cities in California most from an economic and housing market perspective. I truly believe that there's certain cities that are extremely exposed in California to what's coming, while there's other parts of the state that aren't as exposed. And I'm going to get more into those details later in the video so you can understand if you live in California, how exposed your city is. But before getting into that, it's important to understand just how poor of a value California is right now for the people that live there, especially for home buyers and you can see that exemplified on this listing from Zillow which tracks a house that's currently on the market in Orange County. You can see that this house is on the market for $935,000. It's three bedrooms, three bath and only 1,800 square feet. Pictures show that this house is small, it's okay looking. Uh, if you're someone who likes terracotta tile and green backsplash, you'll enjoy it but you're probably not going to want to pay $935,000 for it. Now amazingly, despite this sky high price. It's been on Zillow for five days and 93 people have already saved this listing, indicating just how desperate a lot of California home buyers are to buy a home that according to Zillow is going to cost over $5,000 a month between your mortgage payments and your property taxes and your insurance. Now, of course, some people are willing to pay that in Orange County. Some people are willing to pay that in San Diego and other parts of the state for the warm weather, the laid back lifestyle and all the other amenities that California offers. However, the important thing to remember as a home buyer in California today or as a renter is that California is a volatile housing market and economy. And that if you're buying a house today in California, chances are over the next three to five years, the value of that house is gonna be going down and your mortgage is gonna be underwater. For instance, if you're someone who had the misfortune of purchasing a home in the Los Angeles metro area in 1990, you would have then lost about 22% of the value on your home over the next six years through 1996. Your mortgage would have been underwater and you would have been in a very tough situation having to afford those mortgage payments and losing your flexibility to move and sell your home. In addition, it would have taken until the year 2000 for the value of your home in LA to get back to the price you paid in 1990. Meanwhile, if you're someone who bought in San Francisco in April 2006, the value of your home would have declined by 33% over the next six years, and it would have taken until 2015 for the value of your home in San Francisco to get back to the level it was when you bought it in 2006. Home buyers in California have lost a lot of money by buying at the top of a housing cycle over the last three decades, and that's exactly where we are 
right now in early 2022. We're at the top of a housing cycle in California. And if you buy today, you could be locking yourself into a good half decade of pain where you see the value of your house go down incrementally year by year, and then you're underwater on your mortgage. Now, before moving on in this video to look at different cities in California and the ones that are gonna have the biggest crash, I wanna actually request something from you guys, and that's this. If you were around for the previous California housing crashes in the early 90s and mid 2000s, leave a comment in the comment section about your experience and what you saw. Because many new home buyers in California are not aware of the real experiences of loss that people had in those two previous housing crashes. And I think it'll help a lot for those of you who did go through it to leave a comment and help inform those new home buyers in California today. Now, one legitimate thing about California's housing market today that's causing a lot of people to think we're not in a bubble, uh, that home prices won't go down. If you talk to a realtor in California right now, they're gonna say, oh, it's only gonna keep going up. And the reason they're gonna say that is because of the record low inventory levels across California, which you can see displayed on this map, where we're looking at the percentage decline in home listings over the last two years, where the redder the metro area looks, the bigger decline in listings. And you can see that Southern California has the biggest listing decline. For instance, San Diego went from 4,000 listings two years ago prior to the pandemic to 1,500 listings today. That's a 64% decline. There's really almost no inventory on the San Diego market. We can see Riverside is similar, also with a 64% decline in inventory, while Los Angeles and Orange County are at about a 50% decline. But what's interesting is if you move up north to the Bay Area, we see a much lower decline. Yes, inventory in San Francisco and San Jose are low, but the levels of decline are only about 30 to 35%, which means there's actually a lot more homes on the market in the Bay Area in relative terms than there are in Southern California. Of course, perhaps not so coincidentally, the Bay Area is also the most expensive part of California to own real estate. According to Zillow, the typical value of a home in San Jose is 1.5 million, while it's 1.4 million in San Francisco. And so in terms of predicting timing on the crash in the area of California that's gonna go down first, it's going to be the Bay Area. Prices here are way too high. The inventory here is higher than other parts of California and actually higher than any other part of America. And we're gonna see the Bay Area go down first particularly related to the problems that we're seeing in the tech industry right now. I'm sure if you guys have stock portfolios, you've noticed that a lot of tech companies are taking a dump over the last six to 12 months, big declines across the tech sector. And these declines, which are gonna start first as stock market value declines, company value declines and stock price are going to morph into job losses and companies shutting down. And that's gonna have a disproportionately negative impact on the Bay Area economy and housing market. For instance, the nearly 150 large publicly traded companies in San Francisco have lost on average 40% of their stock value over the last 12 months. That's the worst performance of any metro area in America, and it means that nearly $700 billion of wealth has been wiped out of the Bay Area in the last year. Most home buyers in the Bay Area today work in tech and they use their tech earnings, whether they be big salaries or big stock options, to afford their down payments. And this helped fuel the Bay Area housing market over the last two years when we had a big boom in technology stocks. But now that that's collapsing, it's gonna mean a big decline in wealth and net worth for San Francisco and San Jose. It's gonna mean that home buyers aren't gonna be able to afford as much in terms of their down payment. It's gonna mean that they feel less confident in terms of buying a house. It's also gonna mean that unfortunately, some of these people who work in tech are going to lose their job over the next year to two years as well. These problems are going to be exacerbated as interest and in mortgage rates continue to rise. Higher interest rates are gonna mean more problems for the technology sector across California, specifically in the Bay Area, while higher mortgage rates are gonna mean that anyone who had a fixed budget in terms of affording a home is now gonna be able to afford less. And these surging interest rates, which have a lot to do with higher inflation, is the second warning sign 
for California's economy and housing market. Each time over the last three decades that we've had an inflationary environment in America combined with hiked interest rates and mortgage rates, we've had a crash in California. For instance, take a look at San Diego and the annual cost of home ownership in San Diego between mortgage payments and property taxes, which is what this graph shows. We are now at $53,000, $53,000 to own the typical home in San Diego just between mortgage payments and property taxes, and that would buy you something like this. On the market for $850,000 with a $100,000 price increase, this home is two beds, one bath, 924 square feet, and by the pictures you can tell it's basically an apartment masquerading as a house. Now get ready for this one folks, if you're a San Diego home buyer, you get the privilege of paying over $4,500 a month to own this pseudo home slash apartment. And when you think about now that mortgage rates are gonna go up Further, the 30-year fixed mortgage rate's now 4.4%. It's gonna increase even more going forward due to the Fed hiking interest rates, due to inflation and higher bond yields. You begin to see how this is not a sustainable situation in San Diego's housing market. How much more can this ownership cost go north above the long-term average of $30,000 before the San Diego housing market breaks in half? And you can see here that the average worker in San Diego would need to pay 86% of their wages to be able to afford that annual home ownership cost. And that's just not sustainable, paying 86% of your wages. And very clearly that means that many local people in San Diego are not the ones buying the homes. It's a lot of wealthy families, tech investors, cash investors, maybe some from Asia as well, snatching up the homes. It isn't those who fundamentally live in San Diego. Same situation in LA, the local worker earns $63,000 a year and the total annual costs of home ownership are $55,000 a year. It looks even worse up in the Bay Area where these percentages are over 100%, meaning that the annual cost of home ownership is more than the average worker makes in a year. But interestingly, there are some enclaves of relative affordability. If you go to the Central Valley in a metro like Bakersfield, this ratio is only 37%, it's 45% in Visalia, and then 48% in Fresno, meaning that these areas are much cheaper for local workers who make the local wage to be able to afford a home. And I believe it means that these markets are going to be more stable in the upcoming housing crash because there's more people locally who are buying the homes and who can afford to do it. Now, many people in California like to make fun of these Central Valley metros like Fresno and Bakersfield, and people will say that those areas are ghetto and that they're not nice places to live. But at some point, uh, this becomes a question not of where people want to live, but where they can afford to live, especially in a rising interest in mortgage rate environment with surging inflation. Quite simply, people are not going to have uh, the option of living in San Diego, Los Angeles, or the Bay Area anymore with how high prices are, and people are going to need to leave. And in fact, people have already been leaving. Data from the U.S. Census Bureau shows that 370,000 people fled California in 2021. That's basically 370,000 more people left California than moved into California. That's the fourth worst performance for domestic migration in California's history. It shows that the California exodus is real. Lots of people are legitimately packing up their U-Hauls and leaving given how expensive it's become. But pay attention to this, everyone. There's a very cyclical nature to this flight out of California. Once every 10 years or so, we can see there's a big exodus of people. It happened in the early to mid 90s. It happened in the mid 2000s and it's happening right now. Interestingly, this exodus corresponds very strongly after we see peaks in home price growth in California over the last 30 years, indicating that there's a very consistent trend here. California, it's a beautiful place. It's a warm place. It has economic booms. And in those economic booms, home prices surge up. But then at some point, it gets to be too expensive. And at that point, lots of people leave, which is the third factor now that's indicating California is in for a crash. This huge outward surge of people leaving the state is going to destabilize the housing market 
at a certain point, I believe in 2022. It hasn't happened yet, to be sure. California's economy and housing market so far has been able to absorb these huge levels of people leaving without experiencing a deep recession or housing crash. But history says at some point there will be a crash resulting, especially when you consider how expensive California is getting and the fact that we are seeing rising interest in mortgage rates, which historically is problematic for the California economy and housing market. This means that if you're someone who's looking at buying a home in California right now, understand this. You are buying at the cyclical peak in California's economy and housing market and that very likely things are going to get a lot worse over the next couple of years in terms of home values going down, in terms of potentially you might lose your job. These are things to think about before making the biggest financial decision of your life in buying a home at a record high price. Now, to be clear, that doesn't mean you shouldn't buy a home this year. I think if someone has a long-term perspective and is gonna be in the home you buy for a decade, then maybe you should do it. Because after all, if we look at the long-term value of California's housing market over the last 40 years, we can see very clearly it goes up. It goes up over the long term because it's a place people like to live due to the weather and because there's not many new homes being built so there's a consistent supply shortage. In the interim, we have these swings up and down and up and down and now we're up again. So if you're buying today, you're buying at the peak. That means values are gonna be going down, especially in the Bay Area. I think the Bay Area is gonna be most negatively impacted. It's the most exposed to tech. I could see prices in the Bay Area going down by 30% over the next couple of years. Maybe in a place like San Diego or Los Angeles, it'll be more like a 15% decline. In some of those more affordable Central Valley markets like Bakersfield and Fresno, it'll be a 10% decline. That decline is likely gonna occur over several years. The previous two housing crashes in California took about five to six years to play out. The first from 1990 to 1996, the second from 2007 to 2012. So that's the other thing you all need to remember about a housing crash in California. It's not likely gonna be an overnight event. So if you're someone who's trying to wait it out for a 20% price decline, client, understand that you're likely going to be waiting for years rather than months. Now, before signing off, I just want to tell you guys two things. Number one is these are just my opinions using data from sources like Zillow, the Federal Housing and Finance Administration, as well as the U.S. Census Bureau. I believe that historical data provides a lot of value in understanding what's going to happen in places like California into the future, but it's not 100%. So make sure to do your own research and make up your own mind about what the correct decision is for you. Number two, I want to hear your feedback on the California housing market and this video. Let me know in the comment section below what you are seeing in California. If you're a home buyer, if you're a worker, um, you know, if you're somebody who's trying to decide whether to stay or go, what are you thinking? What are you seeing? When you guys comment below, it helps me become more informed on the housing market and economy and make better videos. And then if you want to support this channel, please make sure to smash that like button into oblivion and also hit the join button below and become a channel member. You get exclusive benefits. The cost is $5 a month.